I'm just getting a really bad attack of office envy. Oh, oh, good, it's uncomfortable. <laughs> I'm Lucy Kellaway, and for over 20 years, I've written about offices. And for longer than that, I've worked in them. I wanted to take a closer look at the new generation of cool offices, where every last detail has been engineered to make the people who work in them more productive and happier too. It's a bit Ikea. The beard straighteners, that is very, very <laughs> messy. It's not complete privacy because you can always just sort of... It looks like a sort of NHS hospital. It's quite strict. From iPad coffee machines... You can oh actually my change God. With ...to free lunches. Well, I suppose I'll have to put up with the Ben and Jerry's. From hot desking to modern art, is any of this making offices better? <gasps> I want this in my office. <laughs> or is it making them worse? So, so you could have me in my pajamas on the screen. After 40 years in the same grim premises in London's West End, the Confederation of British Industry recently moved into a modern building on the edge of the city. The hope was that the new space with its brilliant colours and open plan design would make its slightly frumpy workers more cohesive and sparky. This is the ultimate test of the power of the modern office to transform. The CBI is no West Coast startup. It's a traditional, even sluggish sort of place. So when it fills its office with pods, hubs, and all the rest of it, what happens? I visited earlier in the year when John Cridland was still running the place. Elaine, the Hello. CBI's head of HR, showed me round. Very nice to meet you. So tell me about the colours. I mean, the thing that you notice first of all is all of these primary colours. Makes me feel a bit like I'm back in primary school. <laughs> Does it? Well, hopefully it shouldn't do. But the reason behind the colour was John Cridland, who's our Director General, he really wanted the environment to have a Scandinavian type feel. Mm. So those are the colours that we kind of gave us that feel. It's a bit Ikea, actually, yes, it isn't is, it? Although yeah. slightly more upmarket, perhaps. It, very much so. So that was one of the examples mm. that he used. But it was about really trying trying to also create an atmosphere that had a little bit of energy to it. Mm. And most office environments that you go to, they're probably dark, like the wooden colours, a bit grey. But do you actually think it's true that if colours are bright, people are more vibrant? I do. Um, I personally do, and I've experienced that myself. And I find that even the conversations that we hear going on and how people are interacting with each other, it's very different to where we were at Centrepoint. Well, that's not hard. <laughs> <laughs> The old place had been all individual offices and lots of closed doors. In an attempt to create a flat organisation, everything is now open plan. Although it's single status, I do notice that the most important guy does get the best view. <laughs> um, how does one explain that? Because that is, I mean, the view outside of this it's office fantastic. with St Paul's is just beautiful. So the thing is that he often has visitors, yeah. such as chief execs, that actually bringing them through to meet him yeah. and to sit in this area, it was important that he did have something that reflected that. And, and, and it's great for the small talk, isn't it? So it everyone is. can say, oh, wow, what a marvellous exactly. view. Exactly. We really wanted to try and encourage more informal communication, so get people talking a lot more with each other. I mean, that, that is really hard to do. I mean, know that that's what everyone wants to do, but it's jolly difficult. When I look in this office, no one is talking. Everyone is doing what they're meant to be doing, which is working. So isn't there a sort of tension there that it is actually quite difficult to get people to talk to each other? And maybe you don't even want to because they need to be getting on with their jobs. So I think there's a balance, and I yeah. think you're right. You look out now, people are working, yeah. um, but they're hub in particular which I'll take you through oh, yeah. to in a moment has actually really encouraged people to talk with people mm. that they wouldn't have done before mm. so when we were at center point we were based on two floors and it's amazing that having that divide and also the bricks and the, the meeting or the room sorry the office I mean you don't even recognize you the don't. people who work on a different no, floor you don't and no. I've had that when we first moved here mm. people were saying gosh I've just met yeah. so and so who I've emailed exchanges with but I've never had the chance yeah. to speak to them. I always think the canteen is the most revealing place about an office. The CBI has heroically called it a hub in the hope that staff will use it to get together and share ideas as they eat. Around the hub are so-called pods, seats for more private conversation with high backs and ceiling mounted discs which are meant to prevent others from earwigging. 
Noise in offices is very interesting because we need noise. We do. Because, you know, if you work in a deadly office, it makes you very... I think this is too quiet. I mean, if we just... If I just stop talking for a second and we listen to the background noise, it's quite low. But that works for our staff yeah. here. So if we go over to that end of the building, which we will in a moment, it's even quieter than here. And the reason being is because they are very cerebral very academic so they need that. What do they do? The, the policy they team? Are, yes. <laughs> How did you know? <laughs> yeah. Whereas actually in our resources team it's quite at the moment that's probably because we're walking through but the vibrant energy is there. Further round the hub are a series of booths. Tell me about these little rooms here, little padded cells. I've just walked past the doors and the first one says inspired, the second one chill and the third one which has got to be my favourite says fabulous. <laughs> uh, do you have to be in the appropriate mood if you go in there? <laughs> you don't have to but I'm hoping it helps with the mood. Mm -hmm. So these are our quiet booths and what we wanted to create was breakout areas for people depending upon what work activities they've got. If they needed some quiet time or to make a private phone call they could do so. Actually that is so brilliant because in most offices you find people in the stairwells um, having a, giving their builders a bollocking or sort of <laughs> having sort of incredibly embarrassing personal discussions. It's like an old-fashioned phone booth. It fact. is. What the designers really wanted to try and help us and encourage us to do was have the feel of a town centre. All of the different areas where people are working are equivalent to neighbourhoods. Things like your quiet booths would be our libraries. Just listening to you talk, it's so ironic that, um, I mean, this is very fashionable in, in office design now, the hubs and the neighbourhoods, but these things have vanished from real life. I mean, there are no libraries anymore. <laughs> you know? But people still um, want a quiet space. I suppose they do. So, I'm yeah. just, I just think that the metaphor is, is, is quaint. Where we were trying to get to is that community feel. Mm. And, you know, whether we like it or not, yeah, no, those I things existed. It. And so it is just trying to recreate yeah. that. Elaine insists there's been a big change among the staff since they moved in, most notably in what they wear. But instead of dressing down to suit the new surroundings, they've all started dressing up. It has been really interesting moving to the city and in this particular building, there has been a noticeable change. Fascinating, without you saying, did you say anything? No, not at all. So that was a part of the mm -hmm. cultural change that I never expected. But Again, when looking at an environment and where people are, it's made me realise that actually environment can have an impact yeah. on individuals. I think that's absolutely fascinating about dress and that we see it all the time. The more grotty your environment is, the more you just think, oh, whatever. Exactly, oh. exactly. But it's affected dress. Do you think it's affected behaviour as well, that they slightly think, right, I'm more professional now? Yeah, and very much so. And you can see it just in terms of how people interact with one another. And they are very, very proud to have visitors come. We had a family day last year where they invited their family and it was wonderful. The kids would fit right in with the primary school <laughs> colours. <laughs> they did, they loved it. <laughs> One of my concerns about this office was the focus on fun. Competitions to name meeting rooms, quotes on the wall, a mural of workers whose heads have been replaced with those of CBI staff. Yeah. Even coasters with pictures of people pulling silly faces. Yeah, so I can't think of anything I would like less <laughs> And just sit at my desk with a photo of myself <laughs> looking silly and hideous. <laughs> Not that these people look hideous, they look lovely, but I'm just, you know. This is all very much part of the fun culture, but do you think it is very difficult persuading people who normally do their jobs in quite a serious way that they're suddenly fun people? Yeah, it can be a challenge, but again, it's pacing stuff and also it's really helping people to understand why we're wanting to make the change. But why does it need to be fun because in the end it's work? And work isn't fun you spend so many work. hours of your time at work, I know. and so because of the, it is quite a young environment mm. here, and most people quite from where we. So we're, if I think back many years ago, the CBI has a very traditional perception mm. externally, yeah. and so people yeah. think that it's a particular way. But when they walk into this office, it's not. Yeah. And I think that's what we were mm. really trying to, to bring out and to show that we have changed. It is a very different culture mm. and environment from what it was. In a way, she's right. If I were visiting the CBI here, I think I'd feel differently about it. Frumpy would no longer be the first word I'd use to describe it. But if this was an experiment to see whether a new premises can make the same old people more sparky, I'm not entirely sure that it's worked. Never mind all the colours and the cheesy motivational slogans. 
What I mainly saw was a lot of employees in suits eating chili con carne at their desks. But then I'm not sure this should be such a shock. Making the same people doing the same work suddenly become quite different by moving office is a pretty tall order. There's a pound for the Dove shampoo. Fantastic view right down the Thames. But which would you rather, a Cornetto or a banana? No. If I tried to put this stuff on my desk, I'd need the whole lot. The danger of it is that you're just on, you, you're on call the whole time. <laughs>